I have always wanted to build an off-grid cabin, and we need additional living space. The family's getting bigger, and we have more activities happening all the time. So we have decided to build an off-grid cabin on our property, or you could call it an ADA for additional dwelling unit, or you could just call it a really elaborate shed. But this thing is gonna be insulated, heated and cooled. It's gonna have its own solar system, its own battery inverter. It's gonna power itself. And I'm really excited to build it. This video is the first of the series where we are gonna build the foundation. So here we go. Hi everyone, I'm David. Welcome to my channel. We are starting a series where we're gonna build an off-grid cabin. This video is the foundation, but how big do the footers need to be and how many footers to support the weighted structure and keep the whole thing from sinking into the ground? Well, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna go into all the math that I did ahead of time to decide how big and how many uh, so that we have a good, strong foundation to support the weight of this structure. But before we get into that, I'd love to hear from all of you please let me know in the comments below what kind of foundation you would use for building an off-grid cabin. I look forward to reading all of those comments, and now let's get into building the foundation. First off, I hired a buddy of mine to come over with a machine, and we did a little bit of excavation. There was one tree that was rotting, there were ants coming in and out of it, so he took that out for me and did some excavation and got the site ready. For my footers, I decided to pour concrete on site. So we're gonna to have to set up forms to contain the concrete and keep it from spilling out. So I purchased some sono tubes, which are large cardboard tubes designed to hold concrete in place. And I decided to screw together a large two by four frame to hold the tops of all of these forms together so that they're all level at the top and they're not gonna shift and move around as we pour the concrete. I want to make sure that uh, they're all in line with each other. So we're, we're ready now. We're, we're ready to start the construction process. What this is gonna do is uh, give me a layout of where I'm gonna put the foundations, so the foundation pieces. And this is also gonna let me level to this point uh, for the foundation. So we're gonna be pouring the foundation here shortly, but in the meantime, I gotta do a little bit more digging out. So the foundation, we don't want sticking out beyond the structure. The structure itself is gonna be 12 by 16 because that keeps us under the 200 square foot limit for my town. So I'm gonna uh, put this on the edge of the 16 foot run and my uh, forms for my foundation are 18 and a half inches. The middle of that is gonna be nine and a quarter. So that's the first mark. And then I'm gonna come in nine and a quarter on the other side. All right, so right here is nine and a quarter. Should be able to hook the tape measure on that. Now we've got our tape measure hooked on there and let's measure out to the far end. And then over here, that takes us to uh, 173 and a half. So if we divide this length into three equal sections, that's about 58 inches each. So we're gonna come in 58 inches and we're gonna make a mark. And at 116, we'll make another mark. So now we have our even space. So this is where the first footer goes. And then we'll get our second footer right here at that mark. So I need to dig that out. Now I have a, I live in New England. There's a lot of rocks. So we typically need to break it apart. Now there's some topsoil on here. And although I'm not going below the frost line in this case, uh, I do need to be below the uh, topsoil. The organic matter will decay and settle, so I want to be below that. Okay, so we're starting to break through. This stuff here is organic material, roots and things, and that will that's great for planting. Now we broke through it right here. The color changed. And now this is sandy gravel. And that stuff is good to put a foundation on, but the organic dark material is not. So we want this level down to this sandy stuff. Different soil types can carry a different amount of weight per square foot. Now mine is sandy gravel, but it's really important to know uh, your soil type in your area because that will determine 
uh, how much uh, bearing capacity you have. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into this later in the math portion of this video. Okay, let's see if our form will fit off over on this side. <laughs> so we can see that form is nice and vertical. So that means I've dug out enough. So that's the general process. We need to make sure that we're below the organic material, the topsoil uh, stuff, because that will decay and shrink over time. So we wanna be on more stable soil, which is that sandy gravel. Now I do live in the north where it gets cold. So if you are building a large building, like a house, <laughs> you wanna be below the frost line, which is 48 inches in my area. Uh, in this case, it's a very small structure. I'm not worried about frost heaving, uh, but I do still want to be below that organic material. When you build a foundation like this that is less than the frost line, it's called a floating structure. Now that doesn't mean that I want to put it right on top of grass because then it will decay and settle because the organic material is breaking down. So I still want to be below that, but I don't, I'm not going all the way down. I'm not going four feet in this case. All right, the digging is done. All eight footer locations are dug out. Now in this case, I'm so shallow that I'm not doing a separate footer to a separate post or pier. So I'm gonna be using this. This is a cardboard sauna tube. Now these are very common. You can pick them up almost anywhere uh, in the eight inch, 10 inch and 12 inch variety. Uh, this particular one is 18 inch diameter. So that is a pretty big diameter. I had to go to a commercial uh, concrete supply house. They had it in stock. So to buy a 12 foot piece of this, it was $140. And I had to cut it down uh, in the parking lot in order to fit it in my minivan and bring it home. Uh, so we'll cut this up and uh, lay it in. I'll add a few more two by fours for blocking and stabilizing. Uh, you'll see that as we go. This particular sauna tube has an 18 inch inside diameter. Uh, they might be a little bit smaller than that. Sometimes they're 17 and a half inches, uh, which is what I used on my math, uh, but uh, because they'll sleeve some inside the other for shipping purposes. But this happens to be an 18 inch inside diameter. So it's 18 and a half inches. All right, well, I've gone back and forth and we're pretty level all the way around. I've kind of been adding little blocks here and there. So we're pretty level and that will allow me now to measure the height. So what height do I need to cut the sauna tube at? So we'll go 20 and a half on this one. And I'll just keep doing that procedure. So we'll do a 20 and a half here and we'll just keep going down the line until we have all eight cut. So I'm gonna make a quick guide. This is just a scrap piece of wood. So we'll make a mark at uh, 20 and a half. Okay. So we know this is 20 and a half. We'll go here. Okay, marked all the way around. Now we can cut it. Well, of course it took longer than we expected, but <laughs> it wouldn't be a project if it didn't. Uh, so it's late afternoon, but we are gonna start mixing concrete because the forms are finally ready. So the forms are securely in place. We pack some dirt around the base of each tube. Uh, they're all different heights, but they're all level at the top to each other. So when we scree them off uh, and put our little saddles in, uh, they'll all be level. It's ready for concrete and it's stable and secure and I feel confident that we're not gonna have any blowouts. I bought an electric mixer from Harbor Freight uh, and we're going to use the Anchor power station. Uh, shouldn't have any problem running this thing, uh, but, uh, and then I've got a hose for all the water that we'll need. So yeah, ready to go, ready to start mixing.
The tool I'm using here is called a concrete vibrator and I'll link to it in the description below. It's my first time using a concrete vibrator and it's working great to remove those entrapped air bubbles and uh, help make the concrete stronger. Now I'm installing the concrete anchors. Now these are galvanized steel and the ones that I chose uh, meet the requirements that I needed, which is uh, very minimal. I just needed something to hold that beam in place. But there's dozens of different anchors out there. And if you need more uh, uplift resistance or something else, uh, you'll have to choose the one that works for you. Now off camera, I used a little ruler and a Sharpie and I marked the center of each one. So I'm lining it up by eye with the string so that the center of all these is lined up with the string. It's gonna come out to a very straight beam in the end. I'd like to take a moment to share with you how I sized these footers, because I understand they look like a lot of concrete for just a 200 square foot building, but there is some math behind it. You see, you don't want the whole structure to sink into the ground. So the footers need to be sized big enough to support the weight of the structure without settlement. So in order to do that, we need to calculate the total weight of the building under worst case scenario. Now for me, worst case scenario is gonna be the total dead load of the building, the live load inside the building, and the snow load on the roof. The building's about 200 square feet. The roof is a little bit more because we have an overhang. So let's look at the numbers. So for me, I actually made an Excel spree spreadsheet and I, I listed out all the building components. So everything dirt up, so that's foundation, framing, solar panels, all of it. Dead load is gonna be about 16,000 pounds or roughly 80 pounds per square foot. Then live load, I'm gonna use 40 pounds per square foot live load, which is again, kind of a worst case scenario. So we have 8,000 pounds live load. And then finally, snow load. Again, that roof is a little bit bigger than the structure. So the snow load is gonna be about 10,000 pounds. So the total weight of everything bearing down on the ground under worst case scenario is 34,000 pounds. Then we need to know how much the soil bearing capacity is. So we can consult the code book. And I happen to know that for my soil in my site, I have sandy gravel, which according to the building code, has a bearing capacity of 3,000 pounds per square foot. So if we take the total weight of the building, 34,000 pounds, divide it by 3,000 pounds per square foot bearing capacity, we need 11.3 square feet of bearing capacity. So the footers all added together need to total 11.3 square feet in order to keep the building from settling or sinking into the ground. So that's great. Now there's several ways of getting there. I chose to use an 18 inch diameter sono tube as my form for the concrete. That means that each footer is gonna have a bearing surface of 1.7 square feet. So we take the 11.3 square feet that we need, we divide it by the 1.7 square feet per footer, and that means I need 6.6 .6 footers. Well, you can't have a fraction of a footer, so we could round up to seven, but then we'd have three on one side and four on the other, and that wouldn't be even. So I brought it up to eight footers. Well, now we have a nice margin of error. We have four on one beam and four on the other. Everything's even and looks good. Now, just as a little side note, if I had chose to use 16 inch diameter sauna tubes, each one of those would have had about 1.3 square feet of bearing surface, and I would have needed eight and a half footers. Well, now I would have needed to round up to 10 footers total. Uh, so 
In my case, I chose to do it this way, but there are a lot of ways to get there, but you need to know the bearing capacity of the soil, the total weight of the structure, and divide that out uh, by the area of each footer. And that's how you get how many footers you need. Well, good morning, everybody. It's the next day. I know it was looking pretty bright on camera, but it was actually getting very dark and the camera just couldn't adjust and pick up the last row of saddles when I put those in. But the uh, foundation came out great. And a huge thank you to my dad for all the amazing help that he gave me yesterday uh, so that we could get this job done. Uh, we ended up using uh, 33 bags of 80 pound bags of premixed concrete uh, to get all of this in. So uh, that's great. Um, it worked out wonderful. Obviously these are taller over here where we had to get below soil and all the way in the back over here, this is very shallow. So uh, this one is 12 inches deep, whereas this one over here is 22 inches deep. And so they all vary in depth to make sure that we got below that uh, loam organic material. Uh, but yeah, so it came out great. And I uh, can't wait to catch everybody on the next video uh, where we're gonna strip this and set up the beams. And we'll talk about uh, beam deflection and uh, the weight on those, but that'll be in the next video. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.